Hello everybody, Jeff Holiday here, and so I am back with another OBS tutorial. This time, we're going to be looking at studio mode and also animated video transitions. Uh, the first one that we're going to get into is studio mode. So to set the scene, uh, I wanted to I wanted to have Nick with me, but you know it's kind of early. He you know he's he's taking care of his daughter, so I had to get a stand in. So over here. Uh, this is one of Nick's headshots. Not a lot of people know this, but Nick actually has been in movies uh, and, and he's on IMDb and all that kind of shit. So uh, here's, here's, here's uh, Nick looking very serious and super handsome and shit like that. So let's say we're doing an episode of The Saints, our show that we do together. And I know that I'm going to need to change a few things in the next scene, but I don't have to do it while everybody's watching that scene. Well, it's actually really, really simple. You see, before, old style OBS didn't have studio mode. And then studio mode was created and it just, it's a game changer. It's absolutely wonderful. Right down here, right after start streaming, start recording, studio mode. We click that, it'll split the screens, all right? Now, let's say I need to modify the next screen where it's me and Nick watching a video together. So I'll click up here to Saints Vids. And you can see what everybody is actually still watching, what's actually being broadcast or recorded, uh, either for like local record or for if you're streaming, everything is going to be over on this. The Well, it's going to be confusing because there's two of me. <laughs> but on the right side, that's what everybody's seeing live. So I, I still have this selected, even though Saints Main is what's being broadcast. This is selected. My sources have already changed as well down here to be able to control. Now yours is probably going to look a little bit different because I have rearranged my OBS uh, to be able to be a little bit more easy to use for how I use it. But suffice to say, your scenes and then your sources. So in the sources down here, me and Nick are watching a video. We're actually, oh, we're going to watch one of my, uh, my, my latest video on my circle, which is how we uh, we synchronize the videos that we watch together. Well, I select Chrome and I drag it and I can do what I always do. I can, I can change any number of things how it needs to be changed, um, either through resizing or through cropping, which I've demonstrated in other videos. And then I can get it exactly where I want it to be. And this is the whole, the show is still going on and that's usually when I'm like looking away and I'm doing something and I'm letting Nick just talk and whatnot. And then I get everything set up exactly how it needs to be. And then we transition to there. And usually I'll then click off studio mode because I'm not gonna be switching scenes that terribly often. But it's also a good way to preview your next scene to make sure everything is okay. And you can do all sorts of kind of stuff with this too. So like, let's say we need to go back, uh, but we, Let's say we needed to go and get a guest. Now, obviously, I don't have extra Nick set up here. But in here, we're having Vernaculus show up. All right, well, I can open up Vernaculus, or I can add the source and move him around. Uh, let's uh, let's go ahead and get Nick's, uh, Nick's headshot in here. Nick headshot, there we go. And I can resize him to be roughly the right size. Move him to there and transition shunk shunk bam and we're ready to go that's the whole basic idea so studio mode is really really powerful you uh, if you are super fast you can even make a new scene if you need to you could duplicate scenes i mean duplicating scenes is super easy right click on it duplicate etc etc and uh that is just a an extremely powerful way to live edit all of your scenes as need be like on the fly so it's very helpful now the next thing that i'm going to show you is going to be a little complicated so <laughs> we're going to go at it one step at a time i'm going to show you how to do uh scene transitions the the video video transitions because usually like down here scene transitions there's cut so if we do this uh, just goes immediately into it and then there's fade what? What? And then also, there's some new ones too. You can add things like swipes, slides, fade to color, luma wipe. So let's take a look at this. Like, let's do a slide. Direction left, right, up, down. We'll just do left. Oop. 
Right? Not bad. I mean, it's something. Yeah, let's get rid of slide. Uh, let's try Luma Wipe. Some of these are actually pretty cool. Um, you can do all sorts of crazy shit with this, like... You can do a Clock Wipe. You can do Zigzag. Yeah, let's try this one. All right. I think it's too fast. You can't really see it very quick, very easily. Maybe if we set it to 1,000 millisecond. You know, that kind of shit. Super, super basic, but you can you can tool how you want them to be. But you can do something even cooler, and I'll show you in just a minute. So actually, hey guys, real quick before I get into the video transitions, I wanted to share this with you too, because I, honestly, I, I want to make sure everybody is still caught up to the same, you know, area that I am, at least in understanding OBS. So I, I, I'm, I'm mentioning a few times that there, things look a little bit different in here. And it's on, it looks honestly a little bit better when it's not maximized. I, I make it, I, I changed my windows in OBS quite a bit uh, for when it's a lot smaller, it's a lot more compact. But I wanted to show you guys how to change this. So if you come up to, uh, did you do, do, where the hell is it? There we go, view, uh, docs, lock UI. So if you unclick that so that it's no longer locked, you see these little icons near each one of these. And this basically allows you to pull it out and put it wherever you want it. You can move and manipulate all these things, change their shapes, their sizes, all this kind of shit. It's extremely useful, extremely useful, especially when you need to have something a lot more compact uh, than you know what you're working with right now. I could put this stuff anywhere right now and it wouldn't be a big deal. But since I am very often uh, having to work with a very small space with all the extra stuff on my screen, say when I pull it down like this, and it actually is usually a lot smaller. It's usually about like this when, uh, when, I'm, when I'm working on Saints. I, I end up having to have things very, very orderly and easy to understand. I usually pull these over a little bit more too, just so I can read these and I can keep this as small as I actually need to. And then if I need to like live edit something that I need precision for, I'll just, again, bang that thing up. But remind, remember, once you're done like fiddling with everything and making sure it's good, lock your UI, make sure it's good. Anyway, on to the next lesson. Okay, so here we are in Photoshop, just basic, basic Photoshop. Now, this uh, this image is originally made by a great guy, Inseparable Rock. I love his music. He's done uh, music for me, sent me shirts, uh, done some Photoshop work for me. Great, great fucking guy. And he made this original image and sent me the project file. I had to modify it quite a bit for the purposes that I wanted it to do. I don't think it actually, this looks nearly as cool as his original one but it works for what I use it for. So uh, thanks again for that, buddy. But anyway, so I made this image, uh, repositioned me and Nick's uh, little Saints uh, Photoshop thing right around here. And then I, it was very, very simple. I just took, you know, a, uh, what is it fuck it called? I don't know, uh, polygonal lasso tool, went from one corner to the other, and I separated them out into different layers. So as you can see, there's layer one, and there's layer two. And then each of these I saved as an independent PNG. Now that's kind of important, PNG. And the reason why that's important is very, very simple. Um, here, actually, this way you can actually see me. Shung, shung. Okay, so the main reason why that's important is that PNGs will maintain transparency. And doing these types of scene transitions, it's all about transparency. Uh, and that's actually one of the reasons why it gets a little complicated. Now, before we get too further into this, I wanted to say I was really intimidated by doing this at first, um, but to be honest with you, once I actually got sat down and started, it took me like 20 minutes to do the whole thing. It took no fucking time at all. And honestly, if you have the programs to be able to do it, uh, there's no reason not to, because it is it is honestly really goddamn easy, super easy. Uh, so I'll show you how I did it 
Now, there are a few things that are, are kind of important to point out too. Number one, I do use After Effects for doing this. If you have a different animation program, then that's totally fine, but I can't really help you because all I, all I know is After Effects. Um, and also, there's a link in the description of this guy. He did a video, and that's what I followed as my initial follow guide to figure out how I needed to do this. So thanks to him, go check out that video. It might even help you a little bit more than just what I'm doing here. So. Okay, so here I am in After Effects, and again, if you have a different animation program, that's totally fine. Uh, it's just, I'm not gonna be able to help you with the right type of rendering uh, options if it doesn't look anything like After Effects does. So to get started, we're gonna go up here to Composition, New Composition. I wanted it at 1920 by 1080, because that's the size of the canvas that I set for my, uh, my OBS. Um, and pretty much everything else doesn't really matter. Frame rate maybe kind of matters, but I honestly not really. But the duration here is something that is important. You got to think about how long you want this transition to go because transitions have to be fast. I started this one out at three seconds. I ended up shortening it by half. It's only a second and a half long. We'll leave it at three seconds for right now. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is we're going to need to grab our two PNGs. All right, so here we go. Got Nick Transition, Jeff Transition. Now let's take a look at these. Let's put them into our project real quick. Bam, there's me. Bam, there's Nick. Now, like with any animation, there's a timeline uh, that you basically get a chance to, to, to manipulate and move things by. Well, I know that I want my transition to completely cover the screen close to halfway, but I also want it to pause. So let's say this is about halfway. We'll go one, two, three, four frames over. And we're gonna grab both me and Nick. And we're gonna lock, we're gonna put a, uh, a keyframe for position. So that's where its position is going to be. And then we'll go over here to the other side. All right about there. And then we will add another keyframe, just like that. These little buttons, add the keyframes. So for, for mine, it was very, very simple. So I want it to come in from the top. No, actually, I want mine to come in from the bottom. That's right. OK, so we'll go over here to me. And at the beginning of the animation, I basically just do this. I drag these numbers right here at the bottom near position over and then I move them down. And so, whoop, you can see that working. Go over to the end of it, and we do the opposite. To there, and up to there. So if I'm coming in from the bottom, Nick needs to come up from the top. So at this point, at the beginning of the animation, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm having a little bit of brain fart. It's a, it was, you know, a crazy day the day I did this. So I move him up to there. Wham, wham. And then we will move him out and down. And so now we have a basic animation. Perfect. So, and also, this is way too long. This is way, way, way too long. How I ended up fixing this was I would drag these keyframes. I pulled them over so it was a lot closer. Grab these keyframes, pulled them over so they're a lot closer, about like there. And then you can just shorten your project file by grabbing this. And it's right about there. Super simple. Really basic. None of the, nothing about this is exceptionally hard. If, if you've ever messed with keyframes or anything like that at all, or done any animation programs, this is honestly really, really simple shit to do. So that's the easy part. That's honestly the super, super easy part. You know that this is gonna play over top of your scene, then in the middle of this part, the scene is gonna switch, and then this reveals the new scene. Very, very simple. But here's like the part, here's the part that is a little, there's a couple of little things too that you can do with this. Um, I'm gonna select these keyframes. I'm gonna hit F9. F9 just smooths out the transitions a little bit. Um, but also, this is only if you're using After Effects. Um, then we're gonna go up and we're going to export. Uh-oh, why can't we select it? 
export add ridicule there we go okay now this is the part that's really important and this is the part that's gonna like make or break so you have to use PNGs because they have transparency but also up here uh, you have to be able to select an alpha channel so for the purposes of this I actually rendered these as QuickTime uh, which is a dot MOV format but then down here for QuickTime RGB plus alpha alpha is basically the extra channel the extra color channel in an image or a video that allows for transparency. So I set that. I also set it as straight because pre-multiplied will try and blend some colors or blend, blend some of the footage. We don't want that. We want it to be as like severe as possible. Uh, we hit OK, set it for where we want it to be rendered, and then we click Go. Okay, so once that is done, you're going to get a file a lot like this. It is basically just a .mov, you know, uh, it, and it's, it's pretty much ready to go. But the thing is, this is a big file. I mean, it's not super, super big. It's about, you know, 35. Uh, the other one was 50. But you want something small, something really easy to use. What we want is one of these. This is a uh, WebM file, which is the same as these. It's just compressed down from .mov. It'll still maintain its aspect ratio, and it'll still maintain an alpha channel. That's one of the reasons why I really like it. Now, I, I followed the, the video in the description. I followed to find this program. There might be a better one out there, but this is called WinFF. Uh, and the the link for the 64-bit version was in the uh, description of that video and I, I've tested it out it's a clean download so it's totally fine but basically what you want to do is you want to grab this toss it in here and you want to be able to convert this so I set it to Google convert to Google preset is WebMD generic widescreen and it's widescreen because it is a it is a 16 by 9 ratio, uh, you know, 1920 by 1080 or 1280 by 720 would work as well. Uh, your output folder. And then over here, I set the video bit rate to 15,000. And that was just to make sure it's really good. Uh, I also set it for a two pass to make sure it renders really, really well. And honestly, when it happens, it is really fast. Like here, I'll, I'll just, I'll convert it now to show you. And still converting, still converting, still converting. And keep in mind, this is also the one that was three seconds. It's not the one that's a second and a half. This is the old, old one. Just testing it out. And there we go. All done. All done. And then you have your .webm file. All right, so now that we have it all converted, we have basically taking a transparent PNG, we put it into an animation program, we make the animation how we want it to, make sure you render it with an alpha channel, and then convert it to something that's really small and easy to play that also has an alpha channel, which is the .webm. You can come over here to OBS, and we're going to add a stinger. Uh, tester. And so the Stinger is, originally this is a plugin that was designed for OBS. And then OBS, because they're awesome, the people who make OBS are incredible, discovered that people really liked it, so they added it as a feature. So once we open this up, we're looking for the video file. We find Format Transition 2. We already have it added, but whatever. Uh, we'll put this in. Now, keep in mind, so this, this thing took a second and a half to complete. So what we want to do is have the transition point set. Now this is in milliseconds, so one second is 1,000. So our entire clip being a second and a half is 1,500 milliseconds. So we need the middle of that, which is 750 milliseconds. Bam. And that is now added into our drop-down menu for scene transitions. We have tester. And it's gonna look the same, but whatever, you know. Uh, we and there we go. And that's all there is to it. But that little little thing is so handy, and you can you can change which transition you want to go to each time. But that does get a little tedious. As far as I know right now, there is no way to specifically set a transition for each scene. 
I could be wrong. There might be a way to do it, but I haven't found it yet. So for right now, if you need to, to use a different transition to like soften a transition of what you're doing, uh, you're gonna have to have a whole list of different ones that you are gonna wanna put in. Um, and that's also why I try and not do transitions except for at least every few minutes, you know? I don't want it to be too jarring. I don't want it to be too abrupt. Uh, but yeah, that's some more just basic tips for you guys. Some extra things that I'm learning. That's kind of why I do these videos is I find new interesting things to do with OBS and to, to make my live shows better. And I want you guys to do awesome live shows as well. So I'm, I'm just, if I learn it, I'm gonna share it. And I hope you enjoy it. I'll see you guys next time, all right? Bye.